Okay, well, thanks, Dr. Hedengren, for taking a few minutes out of your morning to meet with us this, today. We're going to be talking about refinery optimization. Now, all three of us have internships and industry experience in the downstream and refining businesses, so we bring quite a bit of experience to the refinery optimization table. Now, you might be concerned that the project we did was just an extension of what we did in class when we talked about refinery optimization, but we really looked into a lot of detail and a lot of different uh, aspects of oil refining to make this as realistic and in-depth as possible. So our objective was to take a, a real-life refinery, in this case the Valero McKee refinery, and maximize its profits. So without further ado, we'll turn time over to Ryan. So just as Mike said, our project was an optimization project, and our goal was to optimize the profit of the Valero McKee refinery. Now when we talk about profit, we're not just talking about the value of the products. We're talking about the value of the product, subtracting the cost of the crudes and the operating unique cost for each of the crudes. Now this image on the left here is a schematic for the Valero McKee refinery, including all of the units. And as Mike said, we wanted to expand our uh, optimization so that it would include capacity restraints, specifically for hydro treating and FCC coker crude capacity, as well as several other restraints, such as the sulfur restraints that we wanted for our products. And uh, and many other things that were not discussed in the, in the example problem we did in class. This second figure in the middle is a description of the crude unit that we used. And it allows us that we, as we you know, pick our crudes, it lets us predict the product that we'll get. And we used unique crude assays to describe each of the crudes. And an example of one of those assays is that figure there on the right for the West Texas Intermediate. And as I mentioned, by using both of those, we could pick crude, and then find out what the value of the product was by using these tools. So we looked at a number of different aspects of oil refining. And as Ryan mentioned, we looked at the cost of the crude and we looked at different websites like EIA and other databases that, that have uh, prices for different types of crude. And we looked at crudes from Alaska, the Middle East, Texas, all over the place. And we looked at, based on that uh, figure that Ryan just showed us, from these different crudes, what types of products we can get. We also looked at the sulfur content in each of these crudes. And we looked specifically at this, Vala this Valero McKee refinery and looked at our naphtha hydro treaters and diesel hydro treaters and jet hydro treaters and said, how much sulfur can we remove? And that was one of the constraints that we, that we optimized on. We also looked at unit yields. So for example, FCC or the coker where you're upgrading molecules, we took that into consideration. And we also looked at uh, if one of our volumetric flow rate constraints was reached, for example, if we had too much uh, diesel, we looked at selling that off as a blend stock to other refineries. And one of the other interesting things we looked at was the price of crude oil. Um, as you buy more and more crude from a particular reservoir, those supplies go down, and so the price of that crude goes up. And that was another unique thing that we looked at and incorporated in our optimization costs here. Perfect. Yeah, just want to hit that. And so that kind of leads us to our conclusions, our final optimization. Um, you can see there on the left, that table represents our optimized crude for the 10 different crudes we are looking at. The second column is the quantity that we found was the optimized amount to optimize the total profit for these 10 crudes. Um, and the graph also represents this graphically. It represents for each crude, if you were going to stick it in from into the crude distillation unit from 0 to 100% of the crude distillation unit capacity, assuming the rest was an average of the other crudes. And so the maximum on each of those lines represents kind of a quasi-optimal crude amount. And, and that was kind of a check on the answer that we ultimately got um, through our final optimization. And a few interesting things that we saw from here as you'll notice, there are two crudes that were not picked in any amounts. These were the lighter crudes or the higher API crudes. And we found just based on our refinery optimization, specifically how we set up our FCC and our Coker equations, that the uh, lower API, the higher crudes were worth more. And that kind of comes into what Ryan talked about. We were looking for the profits, not just for the lowest cost crudes, and not just for the ones that produce the products that were the highest, uh, that would produce the most money, but the difference between the two. Um, and as well, we were able to see several different constraints that were hit. Our hydro treater, um, our hydro treater for caro and gas, or caro diesel and jet fuel were the ones that were the restraints that were hit first. And otherwise, we had to sell those off into blend stocks, which was sold for a fraction of the price. And so, assuming our optimization is fully representative of the refinery in question, 
the recommendation we would have is to increase the capacity for those so that we could put them directly into those pools to be able to make more money in that sense. Um, and as well, maybe kind of look for lighter or higher API crudes that were better prices for our refinery as well, just to see if these were representative. Um, but that represents our ultimate conclusion for our refinery. And again, we, there's many things you could continually do to uh, make this more optimal, to better fit the refinery. But for what we were able to get, it was kind of interesting that we got this crude suite for a variety of different crudes and a variety of different amounts.